Hey everybody, time for a new video. Um, I recently finished this Eldar uh, Howling Banshee Exarch, Ex Exarch, Exarch, Ex Ex uh, whatever. This uh, wonderful piece here, and I um, I made some cloaks, some, uh, some fluttering cloaks to add to the, the movement of the miniature. And I got a lot of questions about how, how do you make cloaks or even uh, tabards like this. I also made a uh, the apothecary, uh, which has a uh, the tabard um, from the, uh, the, the sword brethren. And the question was, okay, so how do you make those? And how do you fold those with green stuff? I mean, green stuff is very sticky. And if you try to fold it, it will stick to anything that you're using. Um, and how do you get the direction in them as well? So that's what I'm going to show today. What you're going to need for this is a couple of things. First of all, green stuff, of course. Uh, miniature, this is my uh, test case miniature. I've been using a lot in, uh, some, in my videos. A uh, flat surface, which is reasonably clean. Um, a spatula, some, uh, some sculpting tool. A sharp knife. Um, I use a uh, silicone brush as well for this. I, uh, I really like these, these ones. I also have a flat one. Uh, these are some amazing tools for, for using for green stuff. Um, so you'll be using that one as well. A uh, cup of coffee. That's not coffee, sorry. A cup of coffee, you'll be needing that as well. And lots of water. So what I did in, in my previous green stuff videos is I used Vaseline for uh, preventing the, the green stuff from sticking. So it, once you start working with green stuff, it sticks to everything. Uh, and that's good if you're trying to attach it to a miniature, but it's not so good if it also sticks to your hands and your fingers and your plate and your tool and your whatever. Um, it gets annoying real fast. So um, one thing you can do is you can use Vaseline. So some Vaseline on your fingers, some Vaseline on your green stuff, a bit on your uh, surface. And it will work like magic. It's, it's really, uh, it's great. The only thing is that if you finish your miniature, you need to clean off the Vaseline before painting, because otherwise it will mess up your painting uh, work. Uh, it's not very hard. You can just wash it with some warm, soapy water. So you just make a bowl of uh, warm water, you dunk in the miniature a couple of times, maybe wash it a little bit with a brush, and then, uh, then you're all set. But that is an extra step, and uh, I'm lazy. So the fewer extra steps I can make, the better. So, therefore, this uh, tutorial is going to be a little bit different than what I showed you in the past. Um, because I'm not using Vaseline, I'm using heaps of water. And I'll show you how that goes in a second. All right, let's start. Um, I need another flat surface. I forgot about that one, sorry. And I also need another short knife. <laughs> uh, yeah, the inventory is incomplete, but it uh, doesn't matter. So you take some green stuff. Try not to chop your fingers off while cutting off the green stuff. Anybody has a tip for how to remove this uh, efficiently? Let me know, because it always sticks to my blade and it messes up my uh, my sharp blade. Um, yeah, and here here we already go, right? So it, it starts sticking to my uh, to my thumb. So what I'm doing, I'm uh, taking my cup of water and I'm just dunking my fingers in there, both sides, and I start kneading it. And it's, uh, there's a lot of water, as you can see. I mean, I'm trying to keep everything as wet as possible. And the moment I start feeling uh, it to stick again, I'll just dunk my fingers again into the water and knead it some more. So just keep things wet. Make sure that it's uh, not sticking and you'll be fine. So there we have it. This should be about right, I guess. Always check if there's not any big chunks in it. Sometimes, I don't know what happens, but sometimes the yellow doesn't need as well. And then you have some, some tiny chunks in there. You can just pick those out. Doesn't really matter. I think I'm fine. Okay. There we are, we have some green stuff. So I'm taking out my uh, flat surface. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is make it wet. So I just put, again, dunk my finger into the water. And you put heaps of water on there. Just make a puddle on it. Don't be shy. Okay, and then first thing is I'm going to roll a sausage. And to make it uh, uh, evenly thick along the, the length, I'm going to roll it with a second flat surface. Until I think I've got about uh, the right length of the, the, the cape or cloak I want to make. So for the first thing I'm going to do is make a tabard for him. Um, that doesn't have to be too thick because the like the thickness of my my sausage that I'm rolling here is going to determine the thickness I can make uh, for the the tabard. So for a cloak it should be much thicker because otherwise I cannot make it wide enough. But this for the tabard this should be enough. I'm putting it back in the water. Add some more water. And now I'm picking up my spatula, which I also dunk into the water first, and I just start to squish it. And now uh, you need to pay a little bit of attention because as soon as you're pushing it onto the surface, you're flattening the, the sausage and it will start to stick to the flat surface. So every now and then you just have to push it about around a bit and you will notice that it, it first sticks in, until you get it uh, loose. Just move it around. You can go really thin with these. You can go make them as thick or as thin as you want. Uh, the thinner ones are usually easier to, um, to, to bend and shape, but it's uh, yeah preference basically. Okay, a bit wider, Whoa. try not to mess it up there. Okay, now I'm picking up my sharp blade to peel it off again, to turn it around. Add some more water. Uh, just until I'm uh, happy. I can also start making a shape if I want to uh, want the tablet to move sideways. I can already start doing that here a bit. Okay, I think it should be it. So uh, now all my edges are very rough and not very nice. So I pick my uh, sharp blade and just make some cuts. Until I get a shape that I uh, am happy with. doesn't have to be perfectly rectangular because as, as soon as you start folding it, it uh, the, sh the shape will kind of disappear anyway. So this is now going to be my downside, so the, the bottom of the miniature. Um, and for the length, let me see, something like this, like that. Right. And then one other thing is that I want to attach it to the, the bottom of his belt buckle. So the, it should be a little bit longer uh, at the edges than in the center. So I can just cut away a little bit here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to shape it with the tools later on anyway. Like that. And in the meantime, drink some coffee. All right. Now, comes the tricky part. Because I made it very wet in order to uh, prevent it from sticking to anything, that will also mean that it doesn't stick to my miniature. So this is going to be a very fiddly part. First of all, I'm just going to lay it on my hand because I'm going to uh, make a couple of folds and creases into it. Uh, for that, I'll just add some water again to prevent it from sticking to my finger. And once it's wet, I can just roll up a bit. And as long as it's wet, I can unroll it as well. So it doesn't stick to itself, because that's what green stuff loves to do, is to stick to itself and mess up your whole work. So on my finger, I'm going to just 
give it a little bit of shape already before I put it onto the miniature. I think I want. Oh, lucky. Right. Okay. I think this is about it for now. So I got some creases in there. And now I will have to pick it up with my knife without stabbing myself. And then I want to get the point to the left. Well, actually, my uh, purity seal is going the other way, so maybe I'll just have to follow that one. Because otherwise the wind is blowing in two directions at the same time. That'll be messy. All right, pick it up. Oops, mess it up. And then we'll just push it uh, onto where we need it to be, and then take the silicone tool because that's the least sticky one for green stuff and uh, press it onto the miniature hard enough so that it will stick and now I can use my silicone tool to start moving the tablet around I think the fold here is a bit too much I'm going to try to unfold it which luckily still works yeah, and now I'll just have to uh, start moving uh, moving it until I like the way it looks. And I want to continue those, those creases because the, 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 the tablet is attached to its belt. So here it will, at the top it will crease more than at the bottom. So I'll make some creases in there and then try to make those creases continue all over the, the tablet downwards. Like that, make a small dip. All right. Yeah, it's not really cooperating today. Yeah, and if you make it too thin, it will start tearing quite quickly at the top. So you have to be a bit careful with that. It doesn't really matter if it tears, because you can just always fix it with green stuff in the end. But it will make a mess if it tears off completely, because then your attachment is gone. All right. Yeah, I think we're about there. Yeah, so the thinner you make it, the more wrinkles you will get into it. Um, yeah, that's an, an aesthetic that you either like or don't. So if you don't like all the wrinkles, just make your, your uh, tablet thicker. But I actually quite like it, so I'll, uh, I usually go for thin ones. Um, so this was, this was made with fresh green stuff, as you saw. So I mix the green stuff and immediately start working with it. I know that some people uh, wait a while. Uh, that's also very much possible. What you can also do is do this like this right now, uh, allow it to cure for a while, and then come back to it and work some more. Because the longer you wait, the stiffer it will get. Um, so it will get a little bit easier to work with it. But um, usually I do both. So I, I, I start it with it immediately, uh, and then uh, after a while I'll come back to it and then uh, work some more. Okay, that was number one, the tablet. Next one would be the cape, because this is, um, as you can see, I had kind of attached it to the miniature. So it will, uh, it will stay in the shape I've put it largely, not completely. I mean, it will, it will still, due to gravity, if I put it like this, due to gravity, it will just still deform a little bit beyond what I uh, made here. But it's, it's uh, sticking to the miniature in a couple of places. So here at the foot, here at the, uh, the ankle, and here at the, the upper leg. And of course at the um, at the belt. So this one does not need any support to dry the way I left it. But for the cape that will be uh, more necessary. But we'll get back to that in a moment. First some coffee. And we are back. 
So, a cape. Let's go. Yeah, I think that's it. Water. Water, water, water. Again, I'm going to take my flat tool. And Alright. Would that be enough? Yeah, I think so. Alright. Okay. So this one I would attach to the bottom of the bat backpack connector. But it might also be cool to make it run up to the shoulders. Is that long enough to do that? Yeah, probably. And I can do that in two ways. I can first make my cape attach it to the bottom and then once it's cured green stuff uh, additional cape up to the shoulders or I can make a real deep cut into here and then uh, make it run up immediately but then I don't know if this is long enough I think I should have added more material if I would want to do that so I'm going to do it in the first uh, the first option so again making Um, let me get a bit out of the center for the backpack connector, something like this, is that wide enough? Yeah, close enough. All right, well. Same thing as with the tablet. I'll just pick it up. Whoop. Be careful. Don't press too hard because then you'll get your uh, fingerprints all over the green stuff. It's not very uh, much of an issue because normally you can you can decide the side, right? So if there's fingerprints on one side, you can just flip it over. But if you don't like it, then you can just put it back onto the flat surface and work it again. That's also very much possible. So now, what I want to do is I want it to move this way and in such a way that it really it's like suggests that it's catching the wind. Uh, so I'm going to fold it. Just a little bit, not too much for this one. There we go. Uh, okay. Now I take my silicon brush again. I'm going to only attach the insides this time. Is all nice and good, but now it's just draping downwards, which is boring. So now we are going to move it to help this fold a little bit.
more water. Yeah, so with Vaseline, I wouldn't be having this problem because it, the Vaseline doesn't uh, evaporate, right? Water just dries out after a while. So if you have a really slow, long process, I would prefer using Vaseline. Simply because it gives you more time to work with what you're doing. Now attached here to his um, what's that butt armor, <laughs> butt armor. That's one place where it sticks. That's good, and it's also attached to his back over here. That's also nice. And he's going to have a backpack here, so this needs to be a little bit more flat. I could uh, attach it to here, but I don't know if that will look. Yeah, that will really look. So to give it a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is cool. So it's now attached here and here. It's also stuck here on his butt and on his ankle. Now that's not going to be enough to keep it in this position. So if I just leave it like this and I'll come back in the afternoon, it will be drooping down anyway. Um, so we're not going to do that. So we'll need one more other thing uh, which I forgot to mention, of course, uh, which is this uh, putty. Um, uh, the most common brand, I think, is Blue Tech. It's, uh, it's it, like it's a kneadable putty that sticks but never cures. Uh, so it, it remains soft. But this is perfect for, for modeling miniatures. Now I can take some of this Blue Tech or putty or whatever you call it. And just support the cape. That's uh, exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make a little bit of a support in a couple of places. And I want the putty to, to touch it, but not to uh, uh, well, deform it, so to say. And so it's going to be a bit tricky. But I should be able to make it work. That's one. So this one supports this fold over here. It's uh, separated from the ankle now, so I'll just leave it like that. That's no problem. I can also put a little bit like this on the knee. So that it will fold up this fold. No, yeah, that should be fine. And now one final one over here. So I'm just making some temporary uh, scaffolds for my uh, for my cape. Doesn't have to be perfect. The green stuff should be firm enough to uh, to survive this. Voila, final part. Um, I think I'm going to support it in one more place, which will be here. And the question is, do I trust this fold over here? Well, maybe not. Shit. Yeah, and there's quite a big chance that you'll mess up things at this part. Um, but then again, you can just go back with your sculpting tools. All right, so I think this should be good enough for now. And But there's yet another trick, of course, which I also want to show you. Um, and that is to make gravity help you in another way. So, as I said, if I put this down like this, gravity will pull it downwards and will make everything uh, go that way. It's not always a problem, but if you want to make that, that, that uh, blowing wind effect, there's another way. So I just take my, uh, uh, another base 
And um, if the cape is flowing this way, I can just make gravity work that way for me. So if I uh, attach this one, so this is actual blue tack, which has some of left. Uh, I can just stick it like this on the surface. So now if I put it on my table, Gravity is actually going to help me. So maybe this one's not even necessary because it will draw the fold that way anyway. Yeah, let me see. I think that's it. So I can put this down like this, set it aside and allow it everything to cure. So next day, let's see the results. It's still stuck on the, on the plate. I can just pull it off. Okay. And now I can just gently remove the putty. And if there's any any putty still left on the on the green tip, you can rip it off with the bigger part. It'll just draw it off. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a uh, cape and a cloth. And now just for Testing. And give him a backpack too. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Yeah, so that was a pretty quick one. If I uh, would have taken more time, I think uh, I, I would have made the cape bend more inwards. It's a little bit too far away to my taste. And I would have taken a bit more care with the green stuff because there's still some parts of that um, uncured yellow in there. So and I wouldn't have done uh, wouldn't have done that. The other thing is I um, uh, next step might be to to continue the cape over his shoulder as I said before. So I can either pull it over completely and attach it here, like you see with the new uh, black templars maybe. Uh, or just leave it like this. I mean, this is pretty cool like this as well. But uh, yeah, for the rest, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, hope you liked the video. Hope it was useful. And if, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. See you next time.